Revolting People by Andy Hamilton and Jay Tarsis, with Jay Tarsis, Jan Ravens, James Fleet, Hugh Dennis, Penelope Nice, Tony Morsley, Susie Blake, Selena Griffiths, Michael Fenton Stevens, and Andy Hamilton. Splashing in the tarby with the nagel nagel knot, scrubbing up and dangling with the snake of bag of pop, up pops me popper, whoops goes me what, diddle goes the piddle in the middle of me rod, all together now. <laughs> Splashing in. Enough, the... McGurk. Whoa. There's no singing in the bathhouse. Just sit quietly in your tub there, I'll sit here in mine, and you try and get clean. Sorry, sir, yes, sir. Can you pass the soap? You need more than soap, you need a rake. Yeah, well, it's been a while between cleansings for me. July 17th, then November the 3rd, uh, yeah. are the traditional hygiene days in the King's Army. In the meantime, I've built me up quite a nice coating of grime, as you can imagine. I don't have to imagine. I can see it. All the drowned lice floating there on the surface. Yeah, with respect, sir, you call them lice, I call them company. Hmm. <laughs> I believe that's the filthiest water I've ever seen. Oh, cheers. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen the Ganges, but this would run it pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> You must de-stinkify yourself. My shop's not had a customer in three days, and it's obviously due to the stench coming from you. Yeah, yeah, could be. Could be, although it might have something to do with that big new general store that's opened up across the street, Obadiah's. Oh, please. That's not a general store. That's an eyesore with that, with that huge, vulgar wooden O on the roof. Yeah, it is a bit shabby, but he does sell everything, from pork scratchings to piano fortes. And mm. he's got this special cue for if you're purchasing six items or less and a specially trained staff to help satisfy all your shopping needs. Wait a second. Have you been buying stuff in there? No, no, that'd be disloyal, sir. I've nicked some stuff, naturally. <laughs> oh, that's all right, then. Sam, will you be needing another jug of hot water? Yes, thank you, Isaac. And one for the redcoat scum? Mind your tongue, you pile of puke. No, Sam, this is an all-male American establishment. I'm a male, you whole son, son of a whore. Look at this. <laughs> Sweet mother of God. Down, down, McGurk. Stay down, for God's sake. I've no control over that. That's nature and warm water invading my private crevices. And... No, no, no. I meant stay sitting down. Oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. This man is nothing but vermin. But he's my vermin, Isaac. And as decreed by King George, we're obliged to treat all such vermin with respect. Yeah, not too much longer, Sam. Not too much longer. Are you the proprietor? Uh, yes, Sam. It's your former spouse. And a little tart and tart. Shh. We'd like to have a bath. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. No entry for women. You can't come in here. Oh, don't be so old-fashioned, mate. This is the 1770s. People are going up in balloons. <laughs> oh, no, it's him again. And Samuel. Hmm. Hello, Samuel. We didn't think you frequented the bathhouse. We especially didn't think that cretin did. Yeah, but at least that cretin happens to be male. Uh, sort of. Isaac. Throw them out. They're not entitled to be here. It's not appropriate. And why is it not appropriate? Because, be, because, you, well, tell them, Isaac, it's your bathhouse. Uh, well, there, there's a rule. Yes. Yeah, and, and rules are rules. They're and, that's and, right. Yeah, and it's, um, it's probably in the Bible somewhere. So uh, I'm yes. afraid you have to depart forthwith. Right. In that case, I'm afraid you leave us no alternative but to buy your bathhouse. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Write him a check, Agnes. <laughs> What's so funny? Hey, forgive me, dollface, but first of all, you couldn't afford this place, and second, it's not for sale. Not even for five thousand pounds. You got yourself a deal. <laughs> then here's the check. Good. Now then, close your mouth and fetch us some water. Right away, boss. You got money. You got lots of money. How did you get money? Well, we started small by taking an embroidery. Soon we were up to doing full-blown quilts. Then before you knew it, we had a lot of disposable capital. Which we shrewdly invested in livestock and poultry. <sighs> which led to our purchasing half the waterfront. But nobody knows it. It's been very clandestine. And discreet. Thus far. Agnes. What? Will you marry me? <laughs> well, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather stop a musket ball with my face. Uh, that's a maybe. Do you own half the waterfront? At least. <laughs> Ironic, ain't it, sir? There's you, struggling pitifully to keep your shop afloat, and your ex-missus and her kissing cousin here are a huge commercial success. Struggling pitifully? <laughs> My shop happens to be the second leading general store in this town. Of two. Yeah, well, that's a solid second, though. <laughs> Here's the water, Chief. And we'll need a screened-off area. He doesn't have screens, sadly. No. Yeah, I'm afraid that's right, ladies. Then you gents will have to turn your backs. Yes, ma'am. You too, McCuck. 
I am turned around. You're looking straight at us. Uh, no, easy mistake to make. You see, my backside looks very like my face. So <laughs> Just turn around. Yeah, yeah, I'm turned. All right, then. We'll disrobe now. McGurk. Yeah. Where'd you get that little mirror? Loud. Why is he crying? Well, I don't know. He's a baby. Cora, why don't you do that trick that you do when you make him quiet? I like that. I like it a lot. That trick's called nursing, Joshua. <laughs> He's tiring me out. That's all he does. Well, that's not all he does. Perhaps Mary could whip out her lady things and have a fling at it. Joshua, the mother does the nursing. Well, I know that. I was just kidding. Good. Well, what about whipping them out just for fun, anyway? Joshua, stop that. But it's boring just sitting around here all day, watching mewling and vomit. I'm getting restless. Go and chop something down. Oh, a tree? A tree would be fine. A maple. All right. There's an axe in the cellar. I don't need an axe. Our little brother's becoming a lot like the other lads in town, eh, Cora? What, incestuous? No. <laughs> I mean, his sap's starting to rise. Would that Captain Brimshaw had but a thimbleful of that same juice roiling in his loins. You love him, don't you? No, I don't. Yes, you do. Do not. You too. Not. Too. Oh, go stick your head in cider. Mary loves Brimshaw. Mary loves Brimshaw. The rebel girl loves her lobster bag. Don't taunt me, Cora, or I shall make embarrassing remarks about you. Just try it. Ginger, baby. <gasps> ginger, baby. Ginger, baby. He's not ginger. He's strawberry blonde. <laughs> Far cry from Ginger. The exact strawberry blonde of Abraham Smith. Shh, Mary, please. You mustn't utter that name. Never say Smith or Abraham or Ginger or strawberry or muscular or stallion or feverish or passion or climax under this roof. For Ezekiel's sake. Did you mean for Joshua to uproot that very old oak? No, I distinctly said maple. Oh, dear. <laughs> what? Is Ezekiel. I went past his office this morning and noticed he wasn't stuffed into his customary seat by the window. Well, he has lots of responsibilities and important business he has to attend to. It's so important he hasn't been home for the last few days. Really? But I'm not worried. He's my husband and I love him. And unlike our own parents, I plan to stay married. In fact, I'm naming the baby Ezekiel. Oh, that's nice. Hypocritical, but nice. Here we are. Shall I split these trees up? Or cram them directly into the fireplace? <laughs> this room doesn't have a fireplace. Oh, good. Something more to do. I hope I find a bear, and if I find it fair, I'll give it a wink and we'll have a drink. We'll just take things from there with a yo, oh, oh, and oh, whoa. Who's that up there in that mulberry tree? Oh, don't shoot. I'm a squirrel. Ezekiel <laughs> Spriggs, is that you? No, I'm a squirrel. Go away. You're right up there. I'm quite content, thank you. Happier than the phalanx of Thessalonican phaetons after pillaging the baths of Caracalla. Well, succinctly put, sir, yep. Yeah, I can't help notice. Your eyes are bleary and your face is covered with stubble. Yes, it's a new fashionable look I glimpsed in a journal. The wild-eyed, slobbering madmen review. <laughs> Shouldn't you be doing your important job as Grand Assistant Walloon at the office of Doohickey or whatever, I mean, rather than sitting up in a tree? <laughs> no, as I thought, something's amiss. The Office of Weights and Measures have informed me my services are no longer necessary. Well, they fired you. No, they just explained to me that circumstances dictated that my tenure had been summarily terminated. They fired you. They uh, really made me cognizant of the fact that my employment opportunity had been minimized by vertical budgetary restrictions. So you were fired? They said my fulsome responsibility had taken a sudden downward spiral. And oh, I... but you're a tiring puff bag. Yes, they said that as well. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I know. I know. On the one hand, you pity me. Well, at the same time, you feel the same sort of revulsion that Perseus must have felt as he rode his winged horse Pegasus towards the gawping moor of the snaky-locked Medusa. Oh, shut up, you bloated mule. I can't. I disgust myself. Now that I'm redundant, 
I shall be unmasked as a charlatan. Oh, People will snigger behind my back and point at me and hurl jibes yeah. and cause me shame with their constant hyperbole and ridicule. And not unlike Sisyphus, I too will be rolling the stone of derision up the steep hill of shame. Somebody passed me the emlock, didn't it? Nobody knows about this. So I'm relying on your discretion, Sergeant. Ah, right. Well, I do my best. Uh, but alas, I have a loose tongue, you see, which renders me prone to moments of unfortunate blurtage. Well, you must curb your blurtage, sir, in this case. Mm, tricky. tricky. I suppose you could always buy my silence. How much is your silence? Tuttons a day, yeah. Tuttons at weekends, and that's discount silence because I knows you. Would you like a receipt? Very well. But I consider this to be most expensive silence. Well, I'm just a poor soldier, sir. I have to provide for my old age. Don't you have some form of pension? Well, I do now. <laughs> Father? Father? Are you awake? Well, let's see now. What do you think? I didn't mean to wake you. But you're talking to me. Yes. Have you noticed... We haven't had a decent father-daughter chat lately. We've never had a decent father-daughter chat. Oh, well, it's, it's time to remedy that. Is it? How have you been, Father? It's 3.30 in the morning. No, it's 3.15. At 3.30, some friends of mine are going to paint their faces and hurl various forms of fruit through the windows of a shop owned by an English sympathizer. Which shop? Obadiah's. Oh, but that's morally wrong, Mary. It's, it's intimidation. I feel honor-bound to warn him. Really? Mm-hmm. I couldn't take advantage of my rival's misfortune like that, even though I'm sure you, you could probably come up with lots of convincing reasons why I should stand by and do nothing. Well, go on, then. Well, you must do as you see fit, Father. Yes, I know, but I like to hear both sides of an argument before I take action. Well, warn him if you must. But if the attack is thwarted tonight, it will simply be repeated another night. It's good enough for me. Now, the point is, I need you to take Sergeant McGurk out to the barn and get him pickled so he doesn't interfere with our lads. I don't understand the phrase, get him pickled. He's in a constant state of piculosity. Is he in the barn? Under a goat, last I saw him, but clean as a whistle. Well, then you must go out there and keep him out of the way. Meanwhile, I'll deal with Captain Brimshaw. You wearing perfume, Mary? Certainly not. Yes, you are. No, just deal with McGurk. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Keep, keep. Oh, cheers, Samuel. Nice of you to bring me out some extra booze. Well, I, I don't like to think of you out here all alone under my goats. <laughs> there, you enjoy a good drink, don't you, Roy? Well, you see, drink helps me forget. I'll tell you something else. Drink helps me forget. <laughs> <laughs> have, uh, have some more Madeira, Roy. <sighs> and dream of better days. When your limbs, eyes, ears, and nostrils came in a pair. Mm, mm. You know, when I'm dreaming, I dream that I'm running. I'm five years old again, and I'm running through the streets of Stepney. Mm. And as I run, I can see the brightly colored stalls of the market. I can smell the fishmongers. I can hear the familiar cries of, Stop that child, he's got my purse. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the golden times. Eh? Yeah. You were robbing people at the age of five? What, and you weren't? No, I wasn't. Oh, right. What, you, you had one of those sheltered childhoods, did you? More Madeira. Oh, just to drive away this melancholy. Probably feeling upset because you had a bath. It's bound to have thrown you, especially when your lice drowned. Oh, yeah, poor fellas. Yeah. Well, then, why don't we raise a toast to absent lice? To absent lice, yeah. <laughs> Steady on, Sam. I'll end up totally legless. Instead of half legless. Oh, yeah, yeah, very good, half legless. Yeah, 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 that was funny with your missus in the bathhouse, wasn't it, eh? I don't want to discuss my wife. Oh, she's a fine looking woman, Sam, with breasts like the onion shaped domes of the Taj Mahal, only without the marble inlay. Uh, yeah, it's very poetical, McGill. Yeah, and obviously rolling in it, and that'll come in handy when your shop goes belly up. Well, for your information, my shop is not going belly up. In fact, I think things are about to turn around. Maybe even tonight. Well, why do you say that? Oh, it's just a slightly smug little feeling. All oh, right, well, let's hope so, because it's not as if you're cut out to be anything more than a, a drab shopkeeper, really. <laughs> well, there's lots I could do if the shop failed. I, I could go on the road as a troubadour, singing songs, telling jokes. What sort of jokes? Well, you know, I could stand up and tell jokes about the politics of the day with, the, with a satirical slant. 
Like, for instance, hey, anyone out there from Britain? How about that British Prime Minister, Lord North? Ha, North, that's not a name, it's a direction. <laughs> How about that stamp duty, huh? Well, if you ask me, it's our duty to stamp on the British. But oom boom <laughs> you know, I, I don't expect you to laugh, McGurk, because this is metropolitan humor. Oh, that's too sophisticated for me, Sam. I'm just a vulgar groundling. Yeah, well, for the broader taste of the hoi polloi, I thought up a comical, catchy phrase that would be the trademark of my act. Go on. You ready? Yeah. Gadzooks, here comes the harbor master. <laughs> uh, that's not funny. Well, not yet it isn't. You have to hear it thousands of times. Oh, right. And then it becomes hilarious. Oh, I see. And before right. you know it, everybody's yeah. saying, Gadzooks, here comes the Harbor Master, and they're falling about. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> they just will. Oh, right. But what happens when this Harbor Master turns up? He doesn't. See, the joke is, there is no Harbor Master. <sighs> But you just keep saying it anyway. And that's what's funny, yeah? You got it. Mm -hmm. I must be more drunk than I thought. <laughs> Holt, who goes there? I warn you, I I'm armed. Oh, Captain Brimshaw, please, don't shoot. It's only me. I must have taken a wrong turning walking in my sleep after perfuming myself, then accidentally blundered into your bedchamber. Well, uh, that happens. <laughs> the, the night plays tricks. Yes. Yes, I'm disorientated and dizzy. I'd best lie down on this bed next to you. <clears throat> Shall I now lead you back to the safety of your own room? Oh, I feel quite safe here, Walter. Safer still if I could snuggle closer like this. Oh, please, Mary, not again now. You torture me with your hot blood. But can't you feel your own percolating, steaming, threatening to explode? But we must wait, for both our sakes, for the Bible's sake. They were banging each other senseless in the Bible, Walter. <laughs> Virtually pages and pages of knowing and begetting. Nevertheless, madam, consummation must not be taken lightly. Oh, thank you, I take this lightly. The point is I can stand it no longer. I'm on fire for you, Walter. But I'm a soldier, Mary, of the King's army and... Technically, you're the enemy, and I'm on duty. From the bunching of the bedclothes, I can see you're at attention. <laughs> That's merely the night playing tricks again. Walter, I know you find me the most attractive hellion you've ever seen. Mary, you are certainly one of the loveliest colonials on the planet, but still I... I, I and think... can you notice how my youthful bosom heaves and gyrates for you? Yes, I was noticing that. <laughs> Even in the dark... Uh, but your father sleeps at the foot of the stairs, and deflowering his daughter under his own roof, well, that might just be considered incendiary. Would it be considered incendiary if I just warmed my little feet against your inner thigh? Mary, may I say you seem peculiarly relentless tonight. You think so? Almost as if you were trying to divert my attention with coquettish subterfuge. Oh, don't be a muttonhead. I'm guileless. This is purely sexual. <laughs> what on earth? Mostly sexual. What? 75% sexual. Captain, Captain, there seems to be a disturbance in the street. Well, I get 60%. Fortunately, I just stepped outside to relieve myself in the horse trough and spotted the mob. Oh, yeah, right. in fact, there may be two mobs. Two mobs of identical twins. And, and they're throwing <laughs> heavy fruit. Let's go quell the insurgency, Sergeant. Mary, we shall speak of this incident later. Vive la freedom! Uh, oh, you won't be needing a sabre, Captain. What sabre? Oh, no, right, sorry, no, it's just, <laughs> just the half light, so sorry. Oh, look at all this glass. They've wrecked my shop. I hope it was just bad aim and that I wasn't the intended target. Mary's renegades are so stupid. They should know the fruit curves. How could they confuse my shop with Obadiah's? Look over there at the big wooden O and that, that ostentatious long line of customers. I'd have fought off the mob, Father, if I'd been awake. But I was spent from felling trees and digging fireplaces and hard asleep dreaming weird boy dreams. Hmm. That's excellent hammering, Joshua, except uh, you've got our tasteful subtle sign placed a little high. It's right at my eye line, Father. Uh, yes, but the normal Baltimoreans not seven feet tall. You saying I should lower it? Yeah, smidgen, son. Bunch of smidgens. Very well. 
And um, just a suggestion, you might try a hammer instead of your forehead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shall I go inside and fetch you a hammer, son? All right, Father. And perhaps a nail. <laughs> oh, does each day hold new fresh hell for me? Seems it does. <laughs> Good day, McGurk. Oh, damn, oh, it's a bit, bit of a fool there. Same to you, Gov, top of the morning. Uh, can you help me to my foot? <laughs> you, are you hurt? Oh, in the pink, sir. Permanent rum insulation makes me oblivious to harmless little pearlers like that. There we go. Oops, yep. pop my eye out. Hang on, got it. Okay. <laughs> put, it put it back in there. It'll, oh, wrong socket. Hang on. Right. <laughs> oh, there you are, sir. Right, ready, I am. Face another day. Here in your charming city of Baltimore, and what's, uh, what's all this broken glass? Well, that's because of what happened last night. Oh, oh. What did happen last night? Think back. Don't you remember? Well, uh, let's see. The last thing I remember is being sent to the colonies. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's all pretty much a blur after that. <laughs> what's that infernal banging? Oh, that's Joshua out front hanging up a for sale sign. Good idea. Sell the boy. Keep that size. Ought to fetch a lot of money. Not the boy. The shop. Uh -huh. I have to face facts. The writing's on the wall. It's all over. It's the end of an era. Seventeen years in one location. Gone with the wind. Now I remember last night. Whinging. Lots of it. You've just reminded me. Yeah. Where are you going? I'm taking a hammer and nail to my son. Well, that's a bit excessive, isn't it, son? I mean, I'm all for discipline, you know. No, but... no, no, that's rather than him suffer a concussion. Oh, I see what he's using his head as a hammer again. He's more than a son, he's a toolbox. <laughs> I'll see you later, McGurk. Oh, and hey. What? Gadzooks, here comes the harbor master. You wait, it'll creep up on you. <laughs> There, 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 there. Oh, it's you again. And her. Hello, Sam. We just happened to be passing, and I couldn't help noticing this sweet lad pounding his head against the wall. I told her to keep walking. This nice lady's ministering to me, Father. I see that. I'm resting my head against her alabaster bosom while she applies a cold compress to my skull. I can see that as well. It feels cozy. You shouldn't be doing this. I know I shouldn't, but the boys bought out all my mothering instincts. You look familiar, especially from this angle. <laughs> oh, I'm getting so drowsy. Oh, go to sleep then, son. Elizabeth, I really think we'd best be moving on now, sister. Elizabeth? My mother's name was Elizabeth, wasn't it, father? Something like that. Or, or Ruth. My mother was a princess who was abducted by a fang-toothed terrapin and carried off into the sea where she now rules over the fish kingdom. Really? Uh-huh. She's starting her fourth turn. They have elections there. Uh-huh. Did your father tell you that? Yep. He's obviously a stickler for accuracy. I never mentioned fang tooth terrapins. Lizzie, we have things to do. Oh, look. The dear boy's fallen asleep on me. Such a precious face. Come, look, Agnes. Not right now. It's time to move on. Here, let's just shift him off you. You'll need a winch. Oh, I don't mind sitting here a while longer. See how peaceful and serene the youngster is, apart from the blood dripping from those head wounds. I don't like this, Elizabeth. It bodes no good. When he needed you, you deserted him. And now you come waltzing back into his life, into mine. This is merely a moment in time. Don't be so suspicious. What is it you're up to, Elizabeth? I know you want something. Your mouth is twitching in that beguiling way it used to twitch, which I don't think about anymore, by the way. I've been watching your shop, Samuel. It seems to be struggling. Aha! Uh -huh. We'd like to take over your shop. Aha! Uh -huh. We'd offer you a fair price. Aha! Uh aha! -huh. Uh -huh. What? Why not sell it to us? We'd make a success of it in return for which... Aha! Uh -huh. Again, the aha! Uh -huh. There's always another boot to drop where you come from. It's a simple boot, barely a slipper. I'd like to see my children sometime. All my children and my grandchildren. They don't have to know who I am, but I get to see them. Oh, so now they're yours, are they? Were they yours growing up during their difficult phases when the birds had to be explained to them, as well as the bees and other insects? Where were you then, huh? I was watching from afar. You were watching? In various disguises, from time to time. In manly disguises, I'll wager. There were mustaches, yes. That magician at their birthday parties? Presto. Guido, the Italian bricklayer? Buongiorno. Gilbert, the foppish traveling tart salesman? Get him while they're hot. Good. Now, Sam, please, allow us to buy your shop. Sorry, ladies. 
But at the present time, I must file your proposition alongside the many other attractive offers I've been receiving on a daily basis. Oh, all right. Here's what we're going to do. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm offering you the position of manager of the shop. Aha. Uh -huh. There is no aha, uh -huh, Samuel. You run the place for as long as you like for a salary. You pocket the money for the sale of the shop. You continue to care for our children. And you maintain your living quarters above the shop. And we'll put a big sign on the roof and invest liberally in advertising and merchandise and basically guarantee that you live out the rest of your days like a wealthy and respected squire. Yeah, but tell me something, Elizabeth. Yes? What's in it for me? <laughs> Revolting People featured Jay Tarsus as Samuel, Andy Hamilton as Sergeant McGurk, Jan Ravens as Mary, and James Fleet as Captain Brimshaw. Ezekiel was played by Hugh Dennis, Cora by Penelope Nice, Joshua by Tony Maudsley, Elizabeth by Susie Blake, Agnes by Selena Griffiths, and Isaac by Michael Fenton Stevens. Revolting People was written by Jay Tarsis and Andy Hamilton and produced by Paul Mayhew Archer. Are you awake? Why? Well, I was just wondering if... if I could possibly have a reassuring conjugal cuddle. No, I'm sorry. You know the rule. No cuddling on a saint's day. Of course. Sorry. Which saint's day is it today, then? Saint Derek. <laughs> saint Derek? Yes. He's the patron saint of fruit. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, then perhaps we could just hold hands. Uh, I'm too tired to hold hands. But you could tell me all about your work. You must be busy because you've not been home these past few days. Oh, busy. Busy, yes. <laughs> I've been as busy as a busiest bee in a buzzing beehive that's been laboring behind its busy bee business schedule. <laughs> that's pretty busy, isn't it? You would better believe it. <laughs> Cora, I know why you're avoiding physical contact with me. You do? The reason is all too obvious. After childbirth, many women, I'm told, find themselves feeling unattractive and so don't like to be approached by demands of a tactile nature. Yes, that's exactly right. How very perceptive of you. I shall simply wait for this period of postnatal reluctance to pass. Well, thank you for being so understanding. Tell me, just out of interest. Mm -hmm. How long does this kind of period usually last? Twenty-three years. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see. Good night, dearest. Good night. And happy St. Derek Day. 